Okay, so this is the 305. Um, this this rug uh, was uh, my dad wore this rug, and uh, it's um, you know some people are actually very good at weaving, mm -hmm. and they memorize the pattern so well that you you know usually uh, a new weaver he would have to draw like the birds, mm -hmm. but these people they just like already know the pattern and. Uh, and they just weave, like, they have all like the design in their mind. The yeah. Wow. This is easy, mm -hmm. this side, because it's geometrical. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to weave, but the, the birds and, and just all those details are much harder. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the sides, you find uh, this pattern, which looks like a lightning. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lightning represents the voice of God. In, in the cosmology of our town, um, there is a legend where uh, our ancestors arrived at this uh, mountain, the sacred mountain. It's called Shigia in mm -hmm. Zapotec language. Mm -hmm. And it, it means like brother rock. Mm -hmm. And every 3rd of May, the whole town climbs it. And, and it's just a way of celebrating that uh, that you know, episode. So, in that mountain, uh, they <laughs> saw a signal from the from the gods. So this huge bird came from uh, from the sky, mm -hmm. amongst the uh, lightnings, and uh, there were seven stars behind it, which are the Pleiades, which at, I think at some time of the year aligns with with those mountains. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that's why they uh, well they always associate uh, lightnings with the voice of God, because uh, at that time, the land was given to the people by this uh, by this you know God who came in the form mm -hmm. of a bird, and in other stories, birds play an important role to keep the gods happy. They sing to the gods so that they keep sending rain to the world, and so that corn can grow and feed people. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's what this rug means, because uh, it's the stalk, uh, the maize stalk, mm -hmm. it, it represents the, like, the base of the pyramids mm -hmm. in our culture. Mm -hmm. Everything we eat is made out of corn, all the major dishes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also in modern times, you'll be surprised, corn is the most cultivated seed in the world really? yeah it's taken over mm -hmm. all the arable land so i'd like to think that's our contribution mm -hmm. to civilization what about those flowers at the bottom of the tree do they have a special meaning uh i don't i don't think so no i'm not aware mm -hmm. of the flowers i think mm -hmm. yeah okay. i really don't know but yeah that's the story of the birds so how long does it Take two weeks about like this. Ah, uh, depends. It'll take like three weeks, mm -hmm. like only the weaving part. Okay. Three weeks to a month, mm -hmm. depending how many birds and how many, how much time. Because also it's not like a nine to five job mm -hmm. that we do. We do farming and yeah, of course. And then you spin the wool and then you dye it and it takes days to dry and. Mm -hmm. So this is the wool of sheep or yeah. goats? Yeah, the rugs are made of uh, sheep wool. Mm -hmm. It's it's a type of breed that was brought by the Spanish mm -hmm. because there were no sheep in, in America before them. And it's actually another town that does all the spinning now because with the advent of tourism and, and just like global traveling, we, we're more specialized now in mm -hmm. weaving and dyeing mm -hmm. and preparing the designs. Mm -hmm. And the blue, for instance, uh, it comes from a plant called indigo. Mm -hmm. Indigo is it's just like a, a bush that grows in very hot places. I didn't know that. I know that blue is indigo. Yeah, yeah. Kind of blue, but and this grows like along the coasts of Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. And then they what they do is they ferment the plant mm -hmm. and then they squeeze the leaves and it, it solidifies into a into a rock 
then you grind it and that mm -hmm. powder mm -hmm. it's what gives you all these shades of blue and actually when the wool comes out of the dye it's it's greenish yellowish mm -hmm. and then it turns blue. and then it oxidizes with oxygen ah, and then it okay. turns blue wow. and uh, so a lot of the naturals a lot of the colors are natural uh, mm -hmm. from natural sources like moss mm -hmm. this this uh well, mossy color, mm -hmm. and the green? but the green is from uh, alfalfa, mm -hmm. and um, what else? This this blue is also from indigo. Uh, from pomegranate, we get some colors like this one, some yellowish these colors as well when it's very diluted. And the bright orange. That's not natural, mm -hmm. no. You yeah, but um, I mean, it was like in the I think seventies or eighties when they introduced like uh, synthetic dyes mm -hmm. and people got really excited about them because you could see all these bright colors that you couldn't get mm -hmm. naturally. So it's been incorporated. And this is the way our weavings have evolved. Mm -hmm. Like before the Spanish came we used to weave on a like a waist loom. It used to be tied around your waist to a tree and really? then if you wanted to weave something large like this you would weave like like in halves mm -hmm. or in thirds and then you would sew it, sew together, it together and match the pattern oh. so it was more difficult but with the petal loom it was much easier to weave mm -hmm. bigger and larger rugs right. and uh, and then what we did as well we started to weave like uh, like ponchos and things mm -hmm. for uh for the like do you do that still? Ponchos? yeah i mean a poncho is basically a rug with a hole in the middle <laughs> it's not much to it but that yeah. is it a little bit like waterproof or water repellent yes yeah wool is naturally water repellent mm -hmm. because it it has the oils the mm -hmm. lanolin mm -hmm. but it gets soaked in heavy rain mm -hmm. but it keeps you warm though yeah. like feather if it gets soaked Mm -hmm. it get, uh, because the, you lose the air gaps, mm -hmm. you get cold, but wool would keep you warm. Mm -hmm. So it was a very versatile material. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's it. For this rug, because we have so many designs I could show you, like yeah. the little ones. Like more traditional designs, I mean, not so pictorial, mm -hmm. but the traditional geometric designs. Uh, oh, this tree. this was my last rug in Mexico. Oh, my actually it was my oh, dad. I like this. Maybe we should turn it around. Yeah, my dad ma made me weave this design because he liked it. Oh, this is beautiful. With the turtles, but and I wove it because it was my last rug. Mm -hmm. You can't hear, touch here. It feels almost like leather. Yeah, it's really thick. It's different. I got to a point where I, I didn't want to weave anymore. I was so angry. <laughs> I was like beating the loom and just channeling that energy yeah. and I was also just having fun and doing it in an exciting way yeah. I can't remember the story of turtles but there's something about turtles in like Aztec history Bye -bye. Hello Francesca Hello. I'm just explaining Francesca. Beata. 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 Yeah. So if you see here, do you recognize this pattern? Yeah, is that the smile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The smile. And uh, And this? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Wow. It's also a very... <laughs> well, it's the way it comes out in the weaving, naturally. Mm -hmm. But it looks very, like, from a school. <laughs> very creepy. I love this one. So, yeah, this is all... All these reds are derived from the cochineal. Uh -huh. what, what is the cochineal is this bug that grows on the cactus. It's a small bug. Really? Yeah, and then I think it takes like 21 days for it to grow and then the cycle. And then the male, which is much smaller than the female, mm -hmm. it, it flies away to, other, uh, to fertilize other eggs or I don't uh -huh. know. And then we collect all the rest, which are the females. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> But then uh, this is the source of uh, of red for, and it's actually used in cosmetics and food colorants. It's 
It's used everywhere. Interesting. Remember that, that I was telling you that actually we eat like 100 grams of insects every yes. year without yeah. knowing? <laughs> well, cochineal is in the mix. Yeah. <coughs> wow, that's yeah. interesting. So, yeah. Gotta find and, oh, the way I sign my rugs, if you see, remember my name in Zapotec is 3 Venado, yeah. 3 Deer, 5 Rain? Yeah. Well, in, uh, in pre-Hispanic numbers like one dot is one five dot is five uh -huh. so three dots there stand for the three venado uh -huh. and a line a horizontal line stands for five okay so it's a it's a way of signing the rugs in right. disguise so that it doesn't interfere too much with the pattern oh that's really nice i like that so it's like a little secret code so how much would you charge for, for this? Like this like a million pounds I'm sure. <laughs> no. Because it's your last drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like Today. this, it took me... The, the average price for a rug like this, it's like... Um, from 500 to 1,000 pesos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, how many pounds? Like, divided by half, that's... Well, it says it's 1,000. Mm -hmm. Divided by so half, 500. it's 500. Mm -hmm. And then that divided by 10. 50, you can just yeah. charge 50. No, but I won't because this took me like a month. Yeah. Because, I, well, I just did a really like detailed work and all the details here mm -hmm. took longer than, than other, like I'll show you other like more yeah. average drugs. But like, I don't know. I think like two hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would at least. But I mean, uh, I, I don't I'll, know. I'll put it on eBay and stick with the high speed. <laughs> so would you really sell that rock, for example, to somebody? This I will. Know at all? Mm, yeah, because otherwise it'll just I'll just keep accumulating rocks, and mm -hmm. this is a good thing about doing things and then just letting it go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now so, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So this is more traditional. Well, is yes, it? yeah, yeah. These are more traditional, like uh, like the other rug I showed, I gave you the little one. Mm -hmm. So you could recognize the pattern that I told you. Yes. The eye of God. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and uh, like just the diamond and moss thing. Yeah, it's like it's derived from that symbol. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these are lightnings. Yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, and these are just patterns you get from. Mm -hmm. from combining different styles of yeah. the harness when you're weaving. But uh, just to remind you and uh, for the video, I'll explain the Eye of God again. Mm -hmm. So, it's just basically a symbol of harmony and equilibrium that, ex that says that uh, we have uh, four different types of energy and uh, from the navel... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, this is actually in all, it's very common in all uh, pre-Hispanic uh, mm -hmm. cultures. Mm -hmm. And they use different symbols and different, uh, yeah, different symbols according to their surroundings. Mm -hmm. So in some cultures they don't use the eagle, but they use the jaguar, the jaguar mm -hmm. like the Mayans did. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Like so. the, I think the highest priest the jaguars. And also, so yeah, uh, for the Zapotecs, and this is actually this is some knowledge called uh, Toltequidad, and uh, there's some books about it as well, and it's also common in in our legends and stories that we're told. Mm -hmm. You always find all the symbols, and uh, they say that uh, from from the navel to your head. You have the spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. And also, if you think about it, like the organs that are, like the heart and the mind, that are more spiritual, mm -hmm. and they try to uh, find the essence of things. Yeah. And also, like from your navel to your head, you have your reproductive system, mm -hmm. which is more earthly, more mm -hmm. bouncy to the earth. And, mm -hmm. and so these are two types of energy that needs to be balanced in order to see the world through the eyes of God, through the eye of God. And then you have your right side and your left side. So your right side is called the Nawal. Mm -hmm. 
which is everything, which is no, the things that you cannot. Right I always get messed up, actually. I think the right side you said, well, you said the right side was the Tonani. The right. The left is in a while, because mm -hmm. there's some dances that you always start with the left. Uh -huh. So you always give a, a chance to the Nawal first yeah, before yeah, saying yeah. words. Saying words. So the tonal, then it's uh, it's everything that you could say with words, everything that you could understand with mm -hmm. words, mm -hmm. and then and the things that you cannot, the energies that you cannot explain or understand with mm -hmm. using words is the Nawal, like yeah. dreams and some feelings, I guess. So just balancing those uh, allows you to see the world through the eye of God, and then the butterfly uh, comes to you, which mm -hmm. represents uh, wisdom. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And then what we do is just uh, we like use all the symbols in different arrangements. And this is what I thought what what I thought was gonna be my last rug in Mexico. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, that's nice. This I wove during my gap year. Jesus? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And this is? Uh, it's an Aztec, well, or just a pre Hispanic eagle warrior. You <laughs> that's see. That's funny that like, you put the two of them on a yeah. rug together. Because, you know, in, in the Bible, there's an episode when there's a Roman soldier that stabs Jesus at the end. Uh huh. And then. What is it called? I can't remember. He was blind and then he recovered his sight after he did that. Really? I yeah. don't. No, I don't remember that. But and uh, I think it's it's not an official story in the Bible, but mm. it's like it's around. And this is actually this is the uh, no 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 the, no, 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 the sacred the, mountain the, the in front of my house. Oh. This has the shape of the sacred really? mountain. Really? Yes. Yeah. Like this rug, I wove in my gap here, and I just put a lot of symbols that I myself created. Yeah. But I also put traditional symbols in it. Like mm -hmm. here you could see the la the cycle of life. Yes. And I, you know, the steps. Uh-huh. And the butterflies of wisdom. The eye of God. Yeah, so, so the, the, the circle of life here, how, can, is that, can you explain that in more detail? Why are there steps yeah. and then there's this the Well, it's like, it's like an, an infinite cr uh, creating loop. Mm -hmm. I think it, it has to do with this palm gesture, because if you do mm -hmm. it like this, yeah. you could just pro uh, like create uh, a symbol that repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So the first step is just represents that when you're born, and then each stage, mm -hmm. uh, an important stage in your uh, you know growth, like when you're a child, a young man, and then the top when you achieve like maturity, mm -hmm. you know you'll get married probably or whatever have kids <laughs> and then that's the point when they say that the land goes down because they explain this in a, in a spiritual way they say that we spend a lot of uh, spiritual energy to make our kids uh, to, to give them the power to create mm -hmm. consciousness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we pretty much give them all of our uh, all of energy or mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. and in physical terms as well I yeah, think yeah that's true so that's why it goes down but back again, and then right? yeah, so when, it's yeah. It's a cycle. yeah at the end is when you die mm -hmm. and then the going back thing it's actually it's a bit like reincarnation it's when you go to the other world mm -hmm. but then you go to the other world just you go actually if you are depending on how you die and it's it's a very complex thing, but they say that if you don't uh, suffer and achieve an, like kind of enlightenment in this world, you will in the other world, because if you were not a good person, in order to get uh, to the other world, you had to go through all these like mm, challenges mm -hmm. or how you call, like punishments, mm -hmm. pretty much. Like walk through a valley where the winds are so hard, razor sharp, mm -hmm. and they'll blow your skin away, mm -hmm. and then you have to walk barefoot on rocky sand, so sharp like glass, mm -hmm. and then there will be a tiger that will eat your heart, and then a lizard will take you to the god of the underworld, just for him to tell you, 
you have suffered enough, now go back and live your mortal dream. And that's when you come back and you, you're born again and you start the cycle. Oh, but there are different that. life cycle symbols. This is the life cycle symbol of like a common person, mm -hmm. if you will. But then there is the warrior's life cycle symbol. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that we were in a constant battle against death. So we have to save as much energy as we can mm -hmm. in order to face and you know have this final battle against mm -hmm. death. And and you have to do this in your everyday life, in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in every action you do. Yeah. And uh, some of this you could find in some books that Carlos Castaneda wrote mm -hmm. in the form of a story. So that's it, like, and this guy is a warrior that is taking revenge. That's why I love it like that. Like, he's like the Roman guy. It's, I don't know how to interpret it, because what I had in mind is like, he's taking revenge. It's, it's, it's a picture to make a statement about how indigenous people might have felt because the Spanish came and conquered us and then they imposed this religion and then they, they enslaved us and then yeah. just this force coming towards us. So that's why I chose, you know, an Aztec warrior stabbing Jesus, like the most dear of the Sp Spanish symbols brought yeah. to Mexico. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, here I just started with smile, I wove some seeds. The most important mm -hmm. ones. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see. These are the most cultivated yeah. seeds in the world. That's wheat in the middle. Yeah. yeah, these are seeds. Anyway, these are grasses, also very important in our uh, development as a civilization, as a humanity. And that looks like a mountain range, but maybe it is the back. This, this are just what mountains. Yeah. But then at the time, I was listening to a lot of uh, podcasts, mm -hmm. and I was hearing all this talk about climate, climate change and then yeah, yeah, yeah. all this uh, data. So at the end, I decided to weave what they call the hockey stick, and mm -hmm. how CO2 emissions are right. really increasing mm -hmm. very rapidly since the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's just an afterthought. And then this like represents fire. And then here I played with the materials, you could yeah, feel different textures, that, yeah. like compared to a traditional rug, I was just experimenting and having mm -hmm. fun. I, I actually took ru uh, wool that has been already spun, mm -hmm. and then I, I did a step backwards. I did, a, I did what's called a carding. carding. Mm -hmm. it, it's just two combs and you rub them against each other and they mm -hmm. break the fibers apart. Mm -hmm. They align them. Yeah. That it's used to, to make uh, the spinning easier that allows you to spin the wool. Okay, mm -hmm. it's yeah. Okay, have like fifteen minutes. Yeah. Anyway that's What's pretty much the last. Like this um, these lines here. Are these oh well these this grasses as well? Yeah, no well this first there's a line here that represents wood, stone mm -hmm. and because uh, these are materials that we've used as a civilization. More mm -hmm. fire that allowed us to melt metal, mm -hmm. oil, and then this part, microchips. Oh my goodness, yeah. Yeah, and you wouldn't think. That is so funny. Yeah, like, uh. and then, and then I just, this is just wool that it's been mm. carded. But then it, the it feels thing. like grass, or yes, it here does. it feels like clouds. Yeah. And that's that symbol. And then here, I thought, oh, I'm thinking too much in this rug. I, I should just storm. weave. Yeah, no, I thought I should, I should not think about that concept or something. I should mm -hmm. just weave. So I started to weave without thinking. Yeah. And, and then I thought maybe, has someone ever woven without looking? So in this little part, you I woven, and the, I covered my eyes, you mm -hmm. know, with a velvet. So, <laughs> I literally woven for like, one day just without looking, just playing with it, <laughs> and that's why it's so messy. I think it looks good. Like, I don't know, it, it yeah. fits in the pattern somewhere. And then the, this part is more weaving without thinking. Mm -hmm. Just just going with the flow, starting with something. And then here I just, let's say I count down. <laughs> <laughs> just lines. And, and then, then the circle flag. Yeah, yeah but and I redesigned it, yeah, just in a, yeah. in a different way. Yeah. That 
I don't know if it means anything or not, but I just was playing with the symbols. That's beautiful. And my signature. Yes. Three there. My name. So that's it. That's okay. I'm gonna stop this because it's getting too long. But I wanna see the others. Oh, I like this. Okay, green one. I'll explain. That's the last one anyway. That's the warrior's life cycle symbol. Oh. And. Oh no, sorry. This is the shaman's life cycle symbol. The shaman. The, shaman. the warrior is like the common life cycle symbol, but it's longer. Mm -hmm. okay. Just because it sustains a longer battle. Right. The shaman, though, it's, it's like a different way of uh, representing life. But you still have the dualities. Mm -hmm. You have your left and your right side. And they say that these two worlds are completely separated in common people, in human beings. Mm -hmm. But actually, what we need to do is like bring them together. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you become a shaman. Like, mm, it's, it's when you bring them together, then you jump to like another level mm -hmm. of like consciousness or just like understanding of seeing the world and then you pretty much uh, you can also swap your uh, your awareness mm -hmm. from from one world to the other mm -hmm. so from the Nawal to the Tonal mm -hmm. okay. so this is where you get all these stories about people who can become like jowers or wind or oh, snake yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's just saying that they can on, they can become that it's that they can understand it. They can almost communicate with the animals like that. They can understand the wind and, mm -hmm. and see what's happening around mm -hmm. them. And just from that understanding, they, they see the world as it is. Mm -hmm. And then they're the ones, you know, in charge of finding which plants are medicinal, how to cure diseases. And mm -hmm. they were the great astronomers, the great mm -hmm. the guys who built the pyramids and all these amazing things. So our ancient ancestors did. So these are the same. This is the same pattern, just uh, reversed sometimes. Like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a. This is the symbol in itself. This right. Part. Oh, okay. I yeah. see. And then the same symbol is upside down mirrored. Yeah. There's also a lot of talk about mirrors. Mhm. Mm I noticed that. Like they, they saw the world. They called the world like a smoky mirror. Mm -hmm. They thought it was. Shame what we it. saw, yeah, mm -hmm. we saw was a reflection mm -hmm. of what was inside, mm -hmm. but then there was some smoke around it. Mm -hmm. So we could never really see the world mm -hmm. because we had this smokiness around it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we, you had to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, these are, these are all the symbols we use. This is, uh, I don't know what is it called, I forgot. Now. It's 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 the ancient cross of the, it's a pre Hispanic cross, and it also shows like the directions which have north, east, west, and south. Mm -hmm. But they were always aware of of the up and the down direction. Mm -hmm. So like in the rituals, like they'll do blessings to the east, west, north, south. But, yeah, and you have it in the tequila, arriba, abajo, ah. al centro. <laughs> yeah, that's and, true. And and yeah, I mean. You, I wouldn't really associate it directly, but it's no, like but part yeah. of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking. These things arise for a certain reason. Yeah. It's all interconnected. So that's that. Uh, this one's a little bit like the one I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except mine has the smile, and this is more like the shaman's life cycle. Like yeah. it reminds me of it. I don't know if it is. Mm, that's more like the warriors, like a like symbol. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the but we took with that the steps um, is, um, is like whose life cycle symbol, like a normal person? Yeah, or? yeah, with okay. the steps, the one that I always do. Yeah. Uh, I think I remember that we went to an archaeological site and I drew it from one of the stones uh -huh. and then we made that. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, and that's these are just so like cute. modern things that we come up with too. Yeah. 
improve our sales. Mm -hmm. That one, my brother did uh, when we were in the team of weaving without thinking. Uh -huh. So then he said, oh yeah, I'm going to do that on school. And this is really it looks a bit like, I don't know, Picasso like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, he made this one as well. Mm. Oh, there's one on the bottom. Let me try this one. Oh, it's, this is it's nice. It's too long though, look. It's a really tall person. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to fix it. I could yeah. fix it. It's an appropriate line. Is this a wolf? Ah, it's a coyote. Ah, okay. Yeah, also... This is a lot this. <laughs> I can't remember the symbolism. But there's like... Meanings and everything. And stories as well, my grandfather's. Do you know where the coyote comes from? Like, what symbology it has? No. But, uh, yeah, I really like when uh, people tell, like, the old stories. I think yeah. someday I'm gonna make some videos on this. Yeah. yeah. You should definitely, I mean, I'm sure they're written down somewhere, but... Okay, I'll finish this now.